In this session, we'll take a look at deleting files. In the pack that comes with the course, you'll find a working copy area MO3L07. If you're not already in MO3L07, then change directory now so that your current working directory is the root of this working copy. Looking at a directory listing, you'll see that we've got three files and a couple of directories in this area. Taking a closer look at the addfile.txt with the info command, we can see that the addfile.txt is mapped to the root of the MO3L07 working copy, and we're looking at revision 1. We want to delete the addfile.txt, so we use the svndelete subcommand. This shows the delete command in its simplest form. We simply use the svndelete command and the name of the file that we want to be deleted, in this case addfile.txt. As with most subversion commands, this file name can be relative or absolute. In this case, I'm using a relative path. As with all operations that manipulate the working copy, the process is broken down into two steps. First of all, we schedule the action that we want in our working copy, and then we commit the changes that we've scheduled in the working copy into the repository. So the SVN delete command in this form, where we're manipulating the working copy, has no effect on the repository. When the command is executed, its output reports the deletion. In this case, the D on the left indicates that we deleted the addfile.txt. Specifically, the addfile.txt has been removed from our working copy and a deletion has been scheduled, so that the next time we do a commit, the deletion will have an effect on the repository. Looking at the illustrations on the right of the screen, you'll notice that the addfile.txt is still in the blue repository area because we've not yet affected the repository. Whereas in the orange working copy section, the addfile.txt has a red stripe through it, indicating that it's been physically deleted from our working copy, and the D in the circle next to it indicates that there is a deletion scheduled. Looking at a directory listing shows that, in fact, the addfile.txt has been physically removed from our working copy, confirming what is illustrated on the right. And the status command confirms that the addfile.txt is scheduled to be deleted next time we commit the changes to the repository. So, to reiterate, looking at the directory listing of our working copy, we see that the addfile.txt has been removed. Looking at the listing of our repository using the ls command in its URL form, we see that the addfile.txt still exists within the repository. On occasion, it's useful to be able to schedule a deletion against the repository, but leave the working copy file in place. Obviously, one way of doing this is to copy the file to a safe location and perform the subversion delete. However, there's an easier way. In this example, we're instructing the subversion client to delete the addfile2.txt, but the keep local option instructs the client to keep the addfile2.txt in the working copy. The output of the command is identical to the previous example, reporting the deletion of addfile2.txt. Looking at our working copy illustration on the right, however, you'll notice that although the D is scheduled next to the addfile2.txt, indicating that we have scheduled the deletion, there's no strike through of the addfile2.txt entry. That's because the addfile2.txt file is left in our working copy. A directory listing of our current working copy confirms the fact that the addfile2.txt file remains in place. So, by specifying the keep local option on the delete command, we can leave the working copy file in place even though Subversion considers it to have been deleted. The status command confirms the fact that the Subversion client sees the addfile2.txt file as scheduled for deletion. Committing the changes scheduled against this working copy result in the two deletions from the repository. Both addfile.txt and addfile2.txt are removed from revision 2 of the repository. This is illustrated in the blue area on the right, where you can see that the two files have been removed. In our working copy, however, you'll notice that although addfile.txt has been removed, an action that actually occurred when we ran the svndelete command, the addfile2.txt file remains in place but has no working copy information associated with it. A simple directory listing confirms that addfile2.txt is in fact still in our working copy. 
and the status command confirms that addfile2.txt is now considered by the subversion client to be an unversioned file. In other words, it is a file that exists in our working copy, but for which subversion has no working copy information. A fairly common error is to delete a file physically from our working copy without informing the subversion client. Looking at our directory listing, you'll notice that we have a file delfile.txt in our working copy. If we physically remove this file using the delete command, in other words, using the operating system command to delete the file rather than relying on the subversion client, you'll notice that the subversion status command has an exclamation point in the first column of its output for the delfile.txt. This indicates that the delfile.txt is considered to be missing. In other words, the subversion client expects there to be a delfile.txt in your working copy, but for some reason that file is missing. In this case, of course, the reason being that we physically deleted it. We can restore the deleted file using the svn revert command. Revert can be thought of as an undo command. In later sections, we'll see the details of the svn revert command and the limitations of what it can and cannot restore. For now, however, the delfile.txt file has been restored to our working copy. And as shown in the working copy illustration on the right, the delfile.txt has been restored as a copy of revision 1 from the repository. A simple directory command confirms that delfile.txt has in fact been restored. And the status command confirms that the delfile.txt is no longer considered to be missing by the subversion client. Let's create a new file in our working copy. We'll just use the echo command to create a new file.txt file. Suppose we schedule this file for addition using the svn add command. The status command confirms the fact that we've now got a new file.txt scheduled to be added. It may be tempting to think that because the subversion client now sees this as a version controlled file, acknowledged by the A in the first column, that we can use an svn delete command to delete new file.txt if we were to realize that we didn't really need it. Unfortunately, the svn delete command actually produces a warning message, informing us that the new file.txt has local modifications. This basically is informing us that the new file.txt is different to what is seen in the repository, and so the subversion client, erring on the side of caution, warns us of the fact that we shouldn't really be deleting a file which has been modified from what's in the repository. Of course, what's in the repository in this instance is nothing, but nevertheless, this subversion client always attempts to protect the user from accidentally performing actions that will lose work. Since the SVN del file would physically remove the file from our working copy, we receive a warning that the del command may not be what we intend. We can still get rid of new file.txt by using the revert command. The revert command instructs the subversion client to forget the add operation. It will still leave the new file.txt in place though. The status command confirms that new file.txt still exists in our working copy but is now seen as an unversioned file. And the directory listing confirms the file still exists. If we really wanted to get rid of this file, we could now use the operating system's delete command to delete the file physically from our working copy. Let's take a look at an alternative way of performing this operation. We'll use the add command to reschedule the addition of new file.txt. And the status command confirms the fact that new file.txt is now scheduled to be added next time we commit to the repository. This time we'll use the svn delete command, but we'll specify the force option. If you recall from the previous example, when we attempted to perform the delete of new file.txt without the force option, the warning message included the advice that we could use the force option to have the subversion client ignore the warning. So, by issuing svn delete with the force option on the new file.txt, we now get the delete action completed. A status command confirms the fact that new file.txt is no longer scheduled to be added. Furthermore, it's obviously been removed from our file system because it's not listed as an unversioned file. A directory listing confirms the fact that the new file.txt has in fact been physically removed from our working copy. So the svn delete command with the force option unschedules the addition and physically removes the new file.txt.